Hi hey everyone, Diogo Marquez here, your friend in sales. Today I want to share with you a couple of thoughts regarding doing cold calling on a consistent basis. Because maybe there's a good chance if you are actually doing this and listening to this podcast, you're looking for solutions for a problem that you might be going through. And since I do this on a consistent basis, I'm very aware that maybe I'm not the only one going, going through the same things. Because if there's a good chance if you're doing the same thing on a consistent basis, people that are do going through the same thing probably go through the same type of ordeals, right? So like I said and stated when I started this channel, this is all about the journey and helping people along the way. And for me, it's kind of therapeutical because you are sharing things that you are actually doing and not just some BSing people because that's just nuisance. What's the point of that? You're just saying things how they are and how you are going through them. Because I, I found that when you see someone that is doing what you're doing and they actually uh, experiencing and telling you how, how they went about and solved a specific issue regarding that specific problem, you connect more with them because you can see right through them, right? Because you're going through the same thing, right? So this is the purpose of this. And I'm going off a little bit on, on a rant today, but I think it's worthwhile because there's a good point to this. So, uh, so hear me out. Lately, uh, I've like, it's, it's been incredibly hard for me to do some, to do my cold calls every day. And I, I don't know why, to be honest. And the, thing about this that I hate the most is that I already analyzed this from every single point of view that I could imagine, even after speaking with mentors that are doing this on a consistent basis. And I figured that I need to be making more uh, cold calls every day because I, I spend pretty much all my marketing budget at this, this point and I just, uh, I'm at the second year getting recurring premiums from existing clients, like, because I got them, I acquired them last year. So I need to keep the marketing costs low this year in order to at least break even. Because I, I still have, besides the marketing expense that I like I paid, it's a sunk cost essentially. I already, because I have my living expenses, right? So, so I have like a rent and food and all that crap. So it's like, it takes a toll on you. So you need to get more money coming in in order to get the thing going. And I figured after speaking with the benchmark, and the benchmark is obviously someone that is successful. What he told me is that you need to be like crunching in more phone calls every day. And it's cold calls essentially. So you're calling people out of the blue and presenting yourself and it is, what is it that you do so that you can, maybe you connect and then you get a meeting and then you like get in, into even more detail because this is not a pricing thing. You actually, like, in, they need to ask you a couple more questions and all that. You just pretty much interrupted their day, right? So, so you schedule a call, like to get them like, like more in sync with you and like, okay, this is what I want and then all that stuff after doing the presentation. And then arriving at a level of premium and then like signing the thing and then delivering the policy and getting paid. The problem that I'm having lately, to be honest, is that I'm actually having trouble doing some calls. And I find this kind of bizarre, to be honest, because when I was doing door to door and I'll be honest with you, I, I, went, I went to ghettos, like to violent neighborhoods. You won't even imagine. It's like... And the thing is, uh, this might sound a little bit ludicrous, but it, I actually not only enjoyed it, but I actually loved it. Uh, it's something that I, if, if I told myself I just enjoyed it, I, I would be lying. It's a complete opposite. I actually loved it. Loved it to, to my core. I actually, I actually, like, when I went to bed, I, I just, I couldn't, like... I just wanted to wake up and like start doing it all over again because I enjoyed the process so much because like going to rough neighborhoods and violent situations and coming out of there like with signing policies that since uh, not policies because I was doing energy contracts like signing contracts that's what I mean it was insane I, I just I loved it right and I keep uh, if today was the last day that I would be alive if I wanted to look back and have like a, they like get an immediate smile like on my face. Just remembering like one of those days that I went door to door. That's it. That's the only thing because I there's so many good memories out of there, 
and like meeting well and guys and girls and all that and like pretty girls and like all sorts of stuff that I went through so social experiments I, I loved it I really loved it it's something that like because I, I I got in contact with selling door to door because I actually did it on when I was a teenager and then like I had the period of not doing that and I felt like pretty much like not, not very well uh, while I was not doing that and I got uh, in contact with a mentor. He's on his on this playlist as well. And he show, uh, he's doing door to door. He has a, a team that, because he's older now. Because he has a team that is doing door to door using his methods. So I started doing it all over again. And not only I did good, I did I exceptionally well. I excelled at that. And it's because I just love it so much, right? But now since we have the COVID thing. And it's understandable because people put the brakes a bit in order for you like to get into a face uh, face to face meeting. It's understandable. So I, I start myself to uh, change the the um, what I'm doing into doing some cold calls. But when I'm in cold calls, actually picking up the, the cell phone and calling people. And the first year that I did insurance, it was uh, leads, marketed leads. So they typed in a form and I called them. So they pretty much were already expecting you. But these are broke Joes, and nothing against or in favor of broke Joe, just not the type of people that we need in order to get to the, the next level that I'm trying to get to. So I was dealing with a bunch of dysfunctional mofos that uh, pretty much give you a hard time around 100 bucks a premium a year. You're paying like nine and something bucks a month. They, that's what they're paying and still complaining. In the next year, probably they will leave you and go to another agent because they, they, they're doing the same gaming all over again. So you need persistency in this game in order to keep yourself at fault. Because now since I'm at the, the second year of my insurance career, I'm getting paid from the previous year. This sounds very exciting because if I could keep doing this, it starts compounding. So imagine like 40 years of doing, let's say, 2 million a year in life insurance premiums, right? You will get enormously wealthy. You're not, you don't need to do, to do anything else because pretty much you get up just doing it because you love it, right? So the love has to be there, right? Because otherwise you'd stop at some point because there's a... Um, it's a marginal utility thing, it's the decreasing cost. So what's the point of keep doing the thing? Because you already have essentially what you need, right? So it's because you love it. You keep doing it because you're loving it. Otherwise, it's a diminishing marginal returns. So since you love it, right? So you need to love it from day one to pretty much like day 40,000 or something, like when you're like 70 or something, right? So if I love door-to-door -door so much, uh, why in the world am I hating this so much today? I'm going on a rant here today because I think sometimes you just need to show yourself exactly what you're doing to people because they can see right through you. And I'll be honest with you. It's like you hear a lot of people telling about value and that's a bunch of bullshit. That's a bunch of baloney because how, how do they say that? provide value to people and people provide value back? It's just a bunch of crap. Think about it. How in the world is a tobacco company providing value to people? And they are enormously wealthy. Why? Because people want tobacco. Because otherwise, they wouldn't sell one, right? Because just people want it, and they're addicted, and all that crap, right? So it's about what people want, not the value that you are providing. Now, if you tell me if you're like a math tutor or like a statistics major trying to help your neighborhood sister because she needs help like getting into college or doing like stats 101 or something like that, right? You're providing value, right? In exchange for money. She's paying you in order for you to, to explain how to do some math or physics or chemistry or so something like that, right? So that's... Ethics there, maybe. Ethics value, maybe. But for the majority of things, if you look around you, like there's companies that are pu putting pesticides on, on food in order to grow it faster because people want it. And it then damages the quality of food. So this is not about providing value to people. You're providing crappy food to people because people want it so fast. It's about what people want. So if you are a life insurance agent, pretty much people don't want to talk with you because you are appealing to their uh, altruistic sense, meaning not being selfish, because think about it, if like they die, someone else gets money. It's not about them, right? 
So if people were that good, right, everyone would have life insurance because they were thinking about their next of kin, someone that they are, they have their best interest in mind, right? But most people don't have life insurance, right? They hate speaking with life insurance people because they think they will live forever. They don't give a shit about their, their family, right? They don't give a shit about anyone. They care about themselves. So it comes down to if you're actually coming out of, place, out of a place that you actually want to help people, because I actually want to help people. Obviously, I get paid because this is what pays my, my bills and keeps myself sustainable. But it's just... After a while, and I think this, I'm just sharing this with you because maybe we can reach a conclusion like from both ends. It's like my best experience so far as a life insurance agent when was last year when I went door to door. I, I met this restaurant owner. He and his wife are business partners. They're the best customers that I have because I just went there and said, listen, I'm a life insurance agent. I work with X company. I want to help. And they see it right through you. He wants to help, right? He's a life insurance student. If he was like uh, Apple's suppliers, he wants to supply apples, right? Let him in, right? So I'm a life insurance agent, not apples. So we sat down. He brought me like all the policies and all the paperwork. I was able to knock a couple of dollars out of, uh, not dollars because we are here, euros here. So I uh, no knock a couple of euros out of what they were paying regarding premiums. And I managed to like to uh, get them to buy into the idea of having life insurance like in between them. Because it makes sense. They are business partners. They are husband and wife. They have family, right? So they did it. And I'll be honest with you. The second year, this is, I did this like in the beginning of this year, I think. Well, beginning of the last year. No, at the end of last year. Something like that. Just the second year that I was with them. They bought the, la the largest life insurance policy made that year in between both of them. No excuses, no, equivo no equivocations, anything like that. Just a good vibe. I went there. They signed the paperwork. I said, where do I sign? She said the same thing. Where do I sign? And uh, smiles and hugs and all that. We have a good standing relationship. I keep serving them because I want to... I really want to provide value because now I work with a bunch of insurance companies and I'm able to uh, cherry pick the best things for them. That's because I see this relationship going forward. It's like a, a ongoing concern because like if you keep serving them, right, you're providing value, keep explaining the math, tutoring, like uh, like physics and chemistry and all that to your like your your clients, right? So you know how to do marketing or something like that. So you're explaining that to people, right? With no BS. That's what I'm doing. I'm working on my economics degree. I'm working on my CFA program because I, I want to become better at my, I want to like up my value, my, my skill set. And I'm focusing on specializing on insurance, on life insurance specifically, so that I can have a better understanding of exactly what I'm delivering to people. This is providing value in your specific field. This is how I see things. So I keep improving myself from an economics point of view and on a fin finance as a crossing to life insurance. And I chose the CFA program because it's a wonderful program for you to pursue because you, you get very specialized. And I actually even went further in looking forward to develop like a, a even narrower field of expertise specifically to life insurance. So that way, when I come across several insurance companies or whatever type of contract or anything regarding my specific area of skills, I can advise you better because I know what I'm talking about, right? This is the first part. The second part, we already covered about this. It's about psychology. It's about understanding people better, being a consultant, not like a Jedi, ninja, mind trick type of guy. You see a lot of videos out there like that. And it's understandable because you want to like... But it, it serves no purpose, to be honest, because I know about all those gimmicks, right? And I, I, it's like it comes, becomes second nature to you. The problem is not that. The problem is not about dealing with people and they tell you about, uh, uh, I need to think about it, and what would your wife's concern be? So it's not about that type of um, Jedi thing. It's about you being, um, you're tired of it. 
you're tired of dealing with people that pretty much give you bullshit every day. And I'm sharing this rant with you because maybe there's a good chance if you're doing this, you're going through the same thing. And I'm sick of it. I'm just sick of it. I'm sick of, like, you wake up really early and, like, you have that peace uh, moments in time. Like, you're, like, you're fine, you're in a peace. You're, like, everything is calmed down, everything is still. You have your breakfast. I'm a no, uh, one meal a day guy, so, like, I eat once a day. So... It's my reading time when I'm calm and I do my studying regarding my economics and my CFA program and all that. So I'm getting like, okay, my brain is attuned. I watch my motivation uh, pictures, the things that I'm looking forward to. I write down what I want to accomplish. It's like my PhD in economics, like all my programs and all that. So it's like I see myself in the future doing that. And then I have my analytical spot like looking at things, looking at my life at my specific point, and I pretty much am telling myself, and after calling and talking to people that have, they are now where you want to be, and they pretty much, you come to the conclusion that you need to make more phone calls every day. That's pretty much it. My mentor doesn't spend one buck in marketing, not one dollar, not one euro here, nothing. He just picks up the phone and calls people. And now he has such a large customer base, he just pretty much works more on referrals because he has, has more, more customers for, from doing this for 34 years or something like that, right? Go watch Ali Reader, the, the guy from the, the guy that uh, broke the Guinness World Book of Records uh, selling cars. It's referrals, that's it. He keeps going to mom and pop's uh, dinners and associations and clubs and all that, and like people know him, right? You know him as a dad and it's like, all these people, they know the gimmicks, but they're not doing that. They're pretty much taking orders now because they are like in a different situation. They have people coming in. If you're not at that point, specific point in time, you need two things. You need to make the phone calls and you need passion. You need resiliency in order to push forward. And at this point in, in my life, I, I find this odd because I actually need to do this and I'm sick of it. I keep cupping, coming up with excuses not to do it. And it's troublesome for me because from an analytical point of view, I see that if I don't do this, I will fail. So it's like you're talking about going in this direction and everything that you're doing is going in this direction. And you, you won't have anything to like, because you are seeing where you're going and you don't want to be going there, but you're still doing it at every... And anyway, so it's like, why is it there's some additional problem there? And what I found that um, works for me sometimes, like I said, it's not a perfect fit, but it works sometimes, is I keep telling myself, it's not real, it's not real, it's not real. So before I pick up the phone, because I have a LinkedIn contact, um, contact list there, just people I have their cell phone numbers there, and I just, we're gonna, I'm gonna call them. So like, I keep telling myself, like, it's not real, it's not real. Because I'm feeling a little bit anxious before I call. And the weird part of this is that I'm pretty much disconnected emotionally from people. So there's absolutely no reason for you to feel anxious. I think you know what you are going to go through, and that's why you're becoming anxious. Because people will tell you some bullshit People will try to tell you everything they have under their two belts to pretty much place distance between them and you. And then you pretty much get on a, on a call with them. If out of the, all those people that you call, the ones that you get actually get on a call and actually come to the call, so actually they open the Zoom thing or if it's in person, even better. Then you submit the proposals, right? They sign all that crap. And some of them, they will default on what you say, on what they said and signed. So, in order for you to keep doing this, I think now that I'm telling you about this, I think it's normal because you're feeling a little bit anxious because you already know what's coming ahead. So it's like an, uh, this specific game is actually a numbers game, and I think you hear a lot about people that burned out when they are doing cold calling because it takes a lot from them. I don't, I don't agree with burnout. I, I really don't. I think burnout, it's about, there's something wrong there. You should not be going backwards. And you're going backwards because you either don't believe the product or you got way too much people that told you no. 
And now you start doubting yourself. And I don't know if that's me, because now I actually I'm not doing that much volume because I'm sick of calling people. But I still have to do it, right? So it's like if I think about the wonderful moments that I had with people when I got there and I had this wonderful experience, if I have one of those people in my day, just one, I feel better because they energize you. And I think the problem is that you feel, you get de-energized because you are doing so much Jedi mind trick thingy when you're calling people. Because most people are just, just garbage. And you tell me, I am being a little harsh there. Seriously? You need to think about it? A guy is calling you from, let's say, MetLife on some large company, right? You're paying 1,000 bucks a year for 1 million dollar premium, 1 million uh, face value policy. So if something happened to you from this day forward, your family gets taken care of, right? Every, every single debt is taken care of, right? And now you're presenting bullshit to the person that is calling you, seriously? You think that's a good person? See, you don't need to put any Jedi mind tricks. So it's like seeing people for what they are. And I can tell you from my own experience that I see people from their worst. I didn't have any good parents and I'm, I'm way past that, that point now. It's like I'm way past that. But money gets you a better, a better life. Money buys you a better life. You buy better people around you, buy uh, better everything around you because you have money. That, that part is taken care of, right? Want to buy an apartment building? Fine, let's do that. No bullshit. Want to buy a nice car? Let's go buy a nice car. Right? Want to buy a nice house? Let's go buy a nice house. Right? If you don't have money, because I, I, I had no money several times in my life, not even one buck to my name. And I was a lot of that like there. So like getting some ice, ice uh, you call cuvettes here in Portugal. It's like a little box with the, the shapes there. So you put water and have the ice uh, cubes out of there. I used those boxes to get cents there so I could count euros so that I could get some food here at home because I didn't have anybody to eat. So, and the problem was that I was not calling enough qualified people because think about it. If, if I went about and did a couple of co phone calls today and actually called people just like those wonderful customers that I have, I said 10 of these, I would make 100,000 today. But that's not going to happen. Why? Because most people are not like that. Right? So you might, might tell me, you might ask some referrals. I did. I did ask for referrals. And none of them worked out. So when we say it's about a numbers game, it is about a numbers game. And you have to keep doing it. So I have a passion about being successful. I want to, to I really want to do the work. But at a specific point in time, I find myself sometimes that I just, I get sick of people's bullshit. Because there's no value there in the world. When you hear about people telling you about providing value and giving back, seriously? A guy goes into debt to buy a franchise and like pay an enormous amount of money in, like in produce and all that crap in order to get the store up and running, right? So he is giving people like food and all that, right? So you need them. They're useful and you are giving your money in order to get food in, in your table today, right? So they are providing value, right? So in addition to that, they have to give back when they actually get more money. Seriously, why? Do they owe you anything? So like I said, when you hear all those billionaires and millionaires and all that, the giving pledge and all, it's just a bunch of marketing crap. Seriously, it's, it's, just, it's just a marketing gimmick. It's about taxes. It's about a way of uh, improving their marketability in the world, right? Because there's no, there's no point to uh, in economic sense like doing anything unless you're getting a return right so what's the return of pretty much stripping yourself from the only thing that can provide value to people because if you have money you can open another store right you can hire people if you're giving everything away you're stripping yourself from the only thing that you are like because that's a it kind of kind of a, a ledger <laughs> of the value that you provide to the world and you get, uh, you get uh, money as a byproduct of that, right? You have stores, right? You're economically profitable, so you get money in return. 
right? So what's the purpose of stripping yourself from the only thing that you are, that's your power in order to deliver value to the world? So that's the gimmick there. So no, don't buy into it. Billionaires, millionaires, every, everyone in this world, they are looking for promotion. I'm also looking for promotion. The only thing is I'm just telling you things how they are, not with any gimmicks here. Like, why would I be lying, right? So I'm sharing this with you because I think if, we, if you deal with so many people when you're doing cold calling, you don't actually do this for a season. You actually do this like on a consistent basis. After a while, it starts to get to you. And I'm doing this because I think you need to share this. And I, it's not about the gimmick. It's not about anything else. You already know I'm doing promotion. It's just watch my videos. At this point in time, I have almost no views. So why would I be doing this? I'm doing this because to improve my viewability, I guess. No, I, pretty much I'm doing, besides that, I'm doing this because I'm sharing this. Maybe you get someone that actually listens to this and sees, okay, this, this guy is actually, maybe he has a point. And the point to this is that you have to become a kind of a psychologist. And this is where the Jedi mind trick comes in because there's absolutely no way for you to not to go insane unless you disconnect yourself from the situation because you are th thinking about things in a second order perspective or third or fourth or fifth order consequence perspective. You're seeing like the chess game, like a couple moves ahead. And the problem with this is that you know you have to do the step. You know you have to do volume in order to accomplish uh, the so-so people and the people that do Dubai, right? So it's like like 153, something like that, right? Doesn't matter, it's just an example. And you have to do it on a consistent basis. And if you don't love it, you, you're gonna fail. You're gonna quit because why would you keep doing this? This is insane, right? But the problem that I'm having now is that I love doing this, but I'm now at a specific point, I hate it. I just fucking hate it. Because it's, it's the same bullshit every single fucking day. The same bullshit. And you are providing value to people, right? So, and they will be able to give back to their family. Right, because of you, you have a good product, right? He's paying one thousand bucks, and you get, and their family gets one million bucks. So, so that's a good product. It's a good company, right? Serious entrepreneur, cold calling people, has the balls to do it, right? He knows how to do it. He knows the Jedi mind tricks. Comes a psychotherapist, right? Specialized in economic economics, right? So it's a weird fit. But so it's like behavioral economics. Maybe that that would be my thesis. I think. So. If there's a, a cut there and from the person that is calling and the person that is coming from a good spot in order to help people, right? And you do have good customers to back you up because they were closed on you, they liked you, like the guy, the family that has a restaurant, they have resources, right? So they saw the entrepreneur like them and say, this guy, we like him, he wants to help, right? So. On the one hand, you have this universe of people that you obviously, w you would want more people like this because these people are the ones that are going to get you rich. These are the ones that are going to sign, they're going to pay. No excuses, no equivocations, right? But what you find is that I think we feel like this because we spend the majority of our time dealing with a bunch of motherfuckers. People that don't give any, they, they don't give a shit. So, it, because think about it, if it's a funnel, right, you have like 100 red, right, you have like 50 yellow and you have three greens, right? You're looking to get the three greens. So you have to go through all this bullshit. In addition, you have to go through all this, the underwriting process in order to get the whole thing ready from the insurance perspective. It's two sales, like selling John that you're a good fit and then selling, let's say, MetLife or the insurance company that you work with, saying that John is a good fit, right? So you have to work with both. And from the insurance company, I had nothing but love so far, seriously. It's like great people, great, great vibe, always willing to help, so it's so a great vibe. 
So it's not about the insurance company. I love, I love, love working with them. So that's, that's fine. My mentor works with the same company. It's a great guy. So that's fine there as well. It's like, so it's about the people that you're talking to, because from those people, you already narrowed down to the three greens that you enjoy, right? So it's like out of the 100 calls you make. So it's about a way of you dealing with the yellow and the red people. And you have to do it in a way that you stay sane. Because there's a conflict here. You need money because you have your back against the wall. You're getting older. No one, is, no one was willing to give me a job. I was, I was rejected from McDonald's. I was re rejected from picking, picking berries. Not, not even like going to a, a farm field thing. Not even there I was, I was good for that as well. But for some reason, anything that involved uh, a level of aggressiveness and like face to face and pretty much since I had a pulse, I usually found people like willing to like, okay, they pretty much willing to take anyone in essentially. They like throw you against the wall and see the one that, that, that sticks. But the people that I met there, usually they have a good vibe and I, I enjoyed it. So when I went door to door, like in the rough neighborhoods, when I sell an energy contract, it's an experience that is endeared to my heart. And I went through the red people and the yellow people and the green people, right? But I, I, I don't know, man, it just it worked out better for me. And it's harder for me to doing this on a telephone. And I'm doing this and I've been able to, to do some deals. I met people that I'm working with in my second year as a cool entrepreneur. He has like a bunch of companies and all scattered all over the place in a good way because he keeps finding more people to run those companies. So he's an entrepreneur. And we, we hang around like it's a good fit. I take care of the insurance part. It, we, we, that's a good fit here. And I met him like this. It's like cold calling. Actually, I actually sent him an email. Uh, to, to be honest, actually, I didn't call him. I sent him an email. But it worked out. And I call, pretty much cold call like all his customers. He sends me a bunch of referrals and pretty much like yellowish green people. So it usually works out. It's a referral base. And I think, I don't know, maybe in this specific line of business, when I, and what I mean specific is like, cold calling, and let's make a distinction between door-to-door -door and cold calling. Cold calling is like a, fo a phone call. So phone calls is cold calling and door-to-door -door is door-to-door, -door, just to make a distinction here. Uh, you already know I'm Portuguese, I'm not English, so maybe I sometimes I like, like have some, like distort some English words, so then I think you get the point. I think this is harder because you're not in front of people directly, you're not connecting to people directly. It's just uh, someone on the other side of the line and I think it makes, from my perspective, because it's easier to do door-to-door -door sales. It's much easier than to do uh, phone calling people, cold calling people, because it's all about the voice. It's all about the tonality. And we already went through the um, logic, the reasoning of, if I enjoy selling door-to-door, -door, like face-to-face, -face, the matter is like uh, rich neighborhoods when I went there, when I was like, doing life insurance, as I went to the wealthiest houses here in Portugal, they are here in Guincho and Quinta da Marinha, they have houses there that you wouldn't believe, maybe you can because maybe you're very wealthy and listen to this, or maybe you saw some houses that I'm, I'm talking about, you know what I mean. I had some business, like some house owners, they, they opened the door and then just went there and started talking. They didn't know how broke I was, or maybe they did, but I actually managed to talk with a few and no one bought because they're very suspicious, but I got I got a business card from a couple of people and like a couple of smiles and all that and say, this guy's okay, this, they didn't buy, but at least I got a good moment out of it, like good vibes. But they didn't work out well. And I did some flyers there like three times. I think I spent like uh, some money in 10,000 flyers or something like that, maybe more, maybe a little less, something around that. And I went door to door like, um, delivering every single one of them got my exhausted every single day in the end i actually paid like i think 180 bucks or 200 bucks to deliver the last ones because i was like so exhausted and i found myself at home like okay so this doesn't work as well so just calling people and in the in ideal world and you see in books like uh, all the books from life insurance people and all that they pretty much it's a referral thing 
But what they're not telling you is that they are pretty much telling you from a perspective of when the thing is already working, which is just doing referrals, not doing ups, how the car people mention this. But if you do have to do ups, if you do have to, if you do have to call red people, right, it's, you have to go through this. There's no way around this, to be honest. I would like to have a lead program that work here, like my colleague David he has in the US with the final expense. I try that here in Portugal, it doesn't work. So you actually need to pick up the phone, no marketing expense and start calling business owners. That's it. There's no way around this. And you can watch all the Saw movies, make you face your fears and you make you watch all the like um, moment of truth and Karate Kid movies to make you, it's not about facing fears. I have absolutely no problem calling you like in, in the middle of the night and start talking about life insurance. It's not, not about that. It's about you needing more green people so c you can keep sane. Because otherwise, you'll find yourself week after week after week calling with a bunch, like spending your day talking to a bunch of mo dysfunctional motherfuckers, right? And you actually expect the end of the day, like you feel well with yourself. It's insane, right? But you have to do it. So the reasoning for all this um, things that I'm telling you about in this call, it's not about selling you a, a program. It's not about like disclosing some very complicated gimmick, some Jedi mind tricks. It's not about that. It's about the cold hard truth that it's going to be horrible. You're going to go through a lot of pain, a lot of misery, a lot of brokenness until you actually get more green people because I've seen, I've seen the other side of the line. I've spoken to people that went, uh, like, are on the other side and you just want to be there. And this is why I'm telling you like the whole point of this conversation. The problem is you because the world stays the same. The world will stay, will stay the same even after you're gone. So forget about the value, forget about all that crap. Now, your values are important. Your, if you, let's say you have ethics uh, from the point of view of you're providing something to people that you know people want, you have a good product essentially, so it's life insurance. So if it's not about the product, so that part is taken care of because it, it's within your ethics realm. So it's something that's okay. It's you're not selling something that you are disconnected from. It's like in within, you, you understand the product, you like the product, you have the product. I don't see that you don't have to like, like manure to sell manure. It's not about that. But what I mean is that you like what you're selling. This is what I, this is one, what my point is. So you, you like, because you understand how people can benefit from it, right? This, it, it's a personal connect with you. It's not a logical decision. It's a love decision, right? So you love what you're doing right the product right and you love the company that is behind you like uh, wor uh, working like uh, like uh, behind the scenes regarding the back office stuff and the administrative work and all the underwriting process they have a good vibe because essentially i fired my my first insurance company i hate those i hate those people right it's like i always have good experiences i don't like i don't talk ill about anyone it's not about that but the, it wasn't a good fit because I didn't. It didn't work out well because they were like on complete opposites of my intellectual sphere. I'm all about striving to be number one and like uh, no barriers. They want to have one trillion of assets and the management. And for them, like anything over fifty thousand was was a was a problem. Like like the hell, dude. What's your problem? Like I'm I, I'm willing to do even more work coming in even earlier and getting off even later and you have a problem with that seriously but in this company they don't have a problem they actually love you you are doing that and then stay like behind you helping you along the way the best they can because they're not salespeople like you they're not that insane they tried they failed but they're good people right so within their powers they try to help you the best they can so it's a good thing so i like them and I like my mentor is as troubled a person as me. <laughs> so all of us are troubled, but he's willing to help. So I love that. I respect that a lot. 
So I respect uh, people that work at the company. I respect a uh, person, everyone that is like, was able to spend some time from their day to mentor me, to help me figure out some things. But this one, you have to figure it out for yourself. And since I didn't find any videos and I, I see that all of them went through this and every single one of us has a different way of going through this. So it's just a matter of you subdividing the problem when you see it and understanding exactly where the pimple is, where the, where the, the, the core root thing is causing you pain. And you already went through this. So if you are a face agent, so door to door works for you and you love it, not like it, you love it. So that's not the problem, right? It's, if it's the product that you're selling and, and it has a benchmark of getting you of the poss potential to getting you to become a billionaire because something that you look forward to, to getting yourself financially free forever. So that's not, not the problem as well. You have the benchmark to back you up, right? So the economics will make sense if you do things in that specific way. So it's not the product. And if you like the company that stand behind you, supporting you in every step of the way, so that's a good thing as well, right? You have support there. Sometimes I get emails from them and saying, this year we're gonna get to this mark. It's like, wow, great, man. It's like, I needed that. And I feel better when I get emails like that. And so that's not the problem. The problem is you dealing with this enormous amount of people that are dysfunctional. So, man, there's, n there's no solution for this. There, there really isn't. And you have to go through it. So my best advice for you is this, Tell yourself it's not real because when the problem starts kicking in is when you start getting anxious. So you have to lever your, uh, lower your anxiety levels to the minimum and just tell yourself it's not real and it's not real and think about the best customer experience that you have ahead. That way you can keep yourself sane when you're calling someone because you don't know who's on the other side of the line. This is one I wanted to share with you. Like I said, this is one of those tough problems that most people don't solve. And this is the problem that most insurance people fail because they spend their day talking with a bunch of uh, dysfunctional MFs and they eventually quit because they are, they are sane essentially. And you have to be insane. In order to be insane and in keeping your sanity, sounds like weird what I'm telling you, but it's true. You have to just going over it. It's like, I'm going to make this call. It's not real. Going to the next one. Going to make this call. It sounds real. Going to the next one. Make 10 calls and stop a bit, then do a, a bunch of another 10 calls, right? And make sure you try your very fucking best to get referrals from people that you actually close, the green ones. Because it's like, um, like a three level thing. It's like um, cold calls and referrals. So you want to get the thing like in a way that it's not no more phone calls, no more cold calls and just referrals. That way you have all only green people. But before you get to that, you have to go through this. And there's no solution for this besides uh, going through volume and just understanding that it won't be forever. You just, you need to understand that it's going to be a period in, in your life that you are going to go through a bunch of random motherfuckers. And you get green people. And when you do get green people, find your best ways of getting referrals out of them, people that they can refer so that you can call them next. Because the more referrals that you have, the less uh, random people that you call to. And then you are able to preserve your, your sanity. This is the best advice that I have so far. My best honest advice so far because it's what I use. And I just uh, took some time out of my day today to make this uh, video. Because I, I needed this, to be honest. And maybe you can, whatever you are, maybe you need it as well. Understanding it from a, an agent like you, sharing the same experiences. And it's uh, all about that. It's most people are going to fail because of this. This is where it starts. Th this is where people fail. You can read all the Tony Robbins and all that crap, but you get to a point if you don't st stop making the phone calls, you won't get to the green people because you need volume. So in order to get to the green people, you need volume. And in order to like go through the, all the thing, you're going to go through a bunch of dysfunctional motherfuckers. It, it comes with a... And if you start losing your passion, start losing your momentum because you took a hit of way too many red people. So you have to disconnect yourself. This is what I tell myself now, what I found myself doing now is like, it's not true, it's not true. And then you call people and then after you disconnect, don't get up.
because you'll find yourself in between calls. You have like way too much time between two calls, which is a problem because your brain is trying to force you to quit. So make 10 calls, quit, then make 20 calls, quit, and then make 10 calls, quit. Well, not quit, pause essentially, until you meet your, you meet your, your daily quota. So before making a call, once again, just tell yourself, it's not, close your eyes and say, this is not real, this is not real. Tell your, your pitch the best, the best you can, but we already covered some ways that you go, can go about in doing this. Do your pitch, do your best thing, just trying to get an appointment, face-to-face -face meeting, possibly, preferably, because it's different. Now you're like in your sphere, like face-to-face. -face. This is why I'm more Jedi effective. Now the Jedi thing comes. And just, uh, it's pretty much it. And just do your best in this, because this is not easy. This is not gonna be easy, and most people fail. And there's a, a good reason for it, because they quit. They get sick of trying to um, go through this because most people won't go through this. I was 220 and 270 pounds. Today I'm 110. And I went through it. I went through all the pain in order to get myself fit today. So I've had enormously good months when I was selling door to door energy contracts. And it was just cold. And I loved it. Right? I didn't, it's like, Man, the minimum wage here in Portugal is like 600 bucks or something like that. And I, I have months of it, 2,000. Right? They tell me 2,000 a month is, a, is good money. No, but it's like almost four times what the minimum wage here is. Coming off of being completely broke. So it's like you're hustling, right? And now you're sitting at home, like not even moving throughout the day. Just calling people. You don't even have uh, gas expenses or anything like that because you're not using your car or anything like that. And you're having trouble calling people. So it's a psychological thing. And since you don't believe, and I don't, and believe in uh, being burned out and all that, it's just a motivation. Finding is what's the problem there. And the problem that I found so far, this is one I wanted to share with you guys. It's about, you talk way too much with red people. That's the problem. And you don't look forward to doing that. And you have to. So that's the conflict there. Your brain is trying to preserve your sanity, trying to keep you at peace. And then you find yourself watching a movie or something like that, right? Uh, out of the blue, you were doing calls and then you're watching a movie. It's like, where did this happen, right? That's a problem because your brain is trying to get you out of that situation, is perceiving it of, of, from being, of being pain. But in reality, just pick up the phone. If it doesn't answer, we say some bullshit, say some bullshit back, and that's it, right? But you need volume. There's no way around this. So there's no good answer. There's no pill for this. The only thing is keep reminding yourself of um, cold people and green people. It's like getting rid of one of those, getting rid of the cold people to getting like only the ones that you, that are going to sign and paying the insurance company so that then you can get paid and get rich. That's it. In order to find these people, you start with your um, you start with your warm sphere. People that already know you, and if you went through those already and you don't have any more because it didn't work that well. Sometimes it works better for people, and sometimes it doesn't work that well for people. Maybe you get one of those or something like that. So you have no you have no shot here. You have to keep calling people, right? And this is what you won't get out of those books because those books telling you it's referrals, referrals. Yeah, referrals. If you don't have referrals, what are you going to do every day? Nothing. So you have to call people. That's it. And in order for you to keep doing that until you find green people, it's just shifting your focus out of, out of the dysfunctional MFs towards the green people, the cool vibe people that do have money, right? Because think about it. You make a bunch of calls today, deal a bunch of random motherfuckers, and then you get one that pays 50000 in premiums to life insurance company. Did that day work out for you? It did, didn't it? And even better, if they give you some referrals and then you go talk to them, is that working? Remember what you talked about, right? So this is about it. It's a long video. Just wanted to share a couple of thoughts because I, I, maybe you need this at this point in your life. I know I do sometimes. Um, and that's it. There's no way around this, my friend. You have to go through this so that in the future, 
when you're looking back and say those days were horrible but you were successful and not the other version of what's happening right now if you keep doing things this way which is those days were horrible and my life is still horrible because that's what's going to happen if you don't keep making those phone calls so that's it you just acknowledge you have to do a certain number every single day one by one and do it in like chunks of 10 something like that so that you can preserve your sanity in between 10 calls something like that because you need a breather right but you have to you have to do them there's no way around this so i hope this helps uh, share some comments below i'll be more than happy to jump on board and try to figure out what your issue is because this is about when the end destination and all that stuff yeah but the journey you need to solve these problems because when you look at it your life is essentially a collection of years a collection of months and weeks and days and hours and minutes and what is it that you're doing so you need to figure things out and you need to like lock in your dreams like being laser guided focused and understanding that there are some parts of this that's going to suck you get one shot of out of 100 or even more so you have to do this there's no there's really no way around this so try to come up with something that works better for you maybe you need a breather let's say at lunchtime you get some sun go for a walk something like that right all of us have different things me at this point anything i'm willing to do anything that works to be honest and the thing that is working for me sometimes is just i'm not going to stand up until i make at least 10 calls right then i stand up go watch like like the sun i go outside a bit then do another 10 calls right do the same thing then get another 10 calls like something like that right dude it's, ju it's just about this so maybe you need this at a specific point in your time and just trying to help and if for some reason you find this works also let me know because <laughs> even if it helps one person you're already successful so stay strong my friend you will be able to do it or not unless you actually do what needs to be what needs to be done and i can tell you that from odds all the odds are stacked against you because most people will fail at this and in order to succeed you have to find something that works uh, in your advantage like i said all of us have different strengths and different weaknesses it was much easier for me when i was selling door to door it's much harder for me doing it using the phone uh, for some any reason that might be so but i, I have to um, i'm still trying to to find my my way around of doing this in a way that it doesn't uh, get me get me to get insane cause me to get insane so it's like it's like i'm telling you you really have to solve this one because the path to riches lies here lies about it's about finding people with the money with no bullshit with a good vibe that stay with you for a lifetime these are the ones that are going to get you wealthy those restaurant owners the the guy that is willing to pay like uh, a large much larger sum of money and present it to you to to his friends because he sees you as a as one of his peers if you think of your life uh, as having more people like that around you instead of one you have 1000 you're wealthy right so it's about this focusing on the right on the right things uh, focusing on understanding that okay i'm going to go through i'm going to take some hits today but i'm focusing on getting the belt i'm focusing on the things that i'm writing down saying john phd in economics or susan uh, like computer science major or whatever the what you're looking to get so understanding that some parts are gonna suck but you need to do the work every day because otherwise you'll like be daydreaming right it's about the activities and in order to do the activities you need the passion if you do have the passion but you're not doing the activities something wrong there so you need to figure that one out and i figured this is the problem that i'm going through like I hate doing the calls, but I need to make to keep making them. So this is what I want to share with you guys. It's about finding the the one thing that is causing you trouble, and when you do, find a way around it. This is the best advice that I have for you because this is something that I'm struggling with, and I need to solve this. And this is how I'm solving this every single day. So 
I hope you enjoyed this one. Remember to subscribe and yeah, click that bell button below thingy down there so you can get notified every time that I make new videos slash rants like this. Peace.